Okay guys, so this is an update for August 25th and it feels like fall is here. I don't know if you can make it out, but some of the trees on the leaves, leaves on the trees are turning yellow and the corn in the back, you could probably make that out. It's almost 10 feet tall and we're just on the back deck right now. And the reason we're back here is because I had some cherry tomatoes back here. I just kind of left them in these pots. And I didn't think they were really going to produce anything, but there's a lot of a lot of cherry tomatoes back here, so just a little extra bonus. And these plants are almost done as well. So let's go over and take a look at the gardens. Okay guys, so here's a shot of the tomatoes. And the tomato plants are pretty much pretty much dead. There's a little bit green on there and the blight killed the plants and there's a lot of red tomatoes on here so we're probably gonna have to be harvesting these tomatoes pretty shortly because the blight has killed a lot of these plants not very big tomatoes because they are aroma tomatoes but uh, considering everything they didn't produce too bad uh, considering blight and stuff I mean this is kinda what you get when you have blight there's not much you could do you could try spraying them but uh, it's very hard to spray for blight on tomatoes. They blight seems to uh, get to them no matter what we do. So there's a shot of that. There won't be too many tomatoes, and we're probably going to harvest them shortly. Over here, let's take a look at the barrels here. So we had carrots in here, and the carrots. I guess they were kind of pulled, and whatever happened here, and the carrots ended up dying. Looks like some of them produced some fresh growth but there's not going to be any carrots there guys so compare the carrots were a complete failure just to the side of them we have parsnips in here and the heads of the parsnips are starting to brown and I pulled the occasional parsnip but uh, nothing really in there yet they're kind of small uh, parsnips but the parsnips still have a couple months to go I guess we could leave them in right till frost so there's the update on that so let's take a look at the corn here guys. So the corn is gigantic. Some of it is almost 10 feet tall. Uh, a lot of it is pushing 9 feet at least. And we had a lot of destruction here. Uh, animals and, I don't know, deer trampling and maybe raccoons and everything kind of just demolishing the corn. And what's been happening with the corn? The corn isn't doing very well because what happened? was the tops of the corn started to tassel early and the bottoms where they produce the cobs uh, right here let's take a look so the bottoms didn't start tasseling or didn't start flowering early enough and the tops uh, started tasseling early and because of that we're not seeing too much cob action so I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen with these corn the few corns that we did check uh, weren't fully developed so it's kind of a letdown, kind of a disaster, and it looks like a lot of the corn is starting to die off, although that could be just plants that were killed by animals, so quite a disaster on the corn. Uh, just in front of the corn here, though, we do have some watermelons. Uh, there's a watermelon right there. I think those are watermelons. I don't know. I'd have to check the package, but there's some sort of melons that are growing, and I know they don't get too big, so and there's a couple of shots of the melons. And it looks like even the melons are kind of st stopping. They're not really flowering as much as they were. I do see the odd flower on there, but a lot of the melons seem to have stopped uh, flowering as well. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with these melons either. Uh, just beside that, we have some cucumbers that the animals were eating. And I guess the animals stopped eating them because I see a whole bunch of flowers here. I don't know if there's any cucumbers on those, but it looks like there's going to be some cucumbers on there. Actually, I could see one cucumber in there. Let's take a look. So there's a shot of one. But we have other cucumber areas, so I'm not too concerned about that. If we get the odd cucumber there, that's great. Then over here, we had a whole bunch of dill. And this is all this dill that's left here was just left to go to seed so you could see these heads here are going to start producing seed pods here so that's a good thing that's exactly what I wanted 
And there's even dill on here that could be, could be harvested, but we got so much dill. Alright, so here's a shot of the main cucumber garden. It's just at the back of the property. And I could see a cucumber hanging from the fence there. I don't know if you guys can make that out, but there's a cucumber right there. And this thing is doing pretty good. It's pretty much covered this whole uh, fence here uh, with cucumbers. And there's a lot of cucumbers in here. There's another one right at the back, kind of hanging on the fence. So there's a lot of cucumbers in here. Hard to show you guys all the cucumbers. And you could see here where the animals, I guess this would be deer, have been topping. They've been topping the cucumbers as they kind of grow out. So that's why this fence is kind of needed. Oh, and there's even some cucumbers here. So we kind of been picking cucumbers, pickling, eating. And some more cucumbers over there. So the cucumbers back here are doing pretty good. And here's a shot of another cucumber kind of hanging. I think that's the same one, but just another angle. And we've been having a really dry season. So using a lot of water, watering. And I think that's one of the things that's been affecting the corn. The corn hasn't been getting a good amount of water back there. Haven't really been watering the corn. And just beside the cucumbers over here, we have the potatoes. And the potatoes are starting to fall down. Uh, somewhat starting to fall down there. So, But they're still growing. Some of them were actually still flowering a couple of weeks ago. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. But it looks like they are starting to fall over. You can see some of these plants are even starting to turn brown in there so maybe a couple more weeks and we can go over and take a look at the main garden see what's going on in there all right so front row and center we have broccoli and these broccolis were transplanted i guess at the beginning of august so they're doing pretty quite good here so uh, this is going to be a new thing planting a late harvest for uh broccoli and cabbage and we'll see how those do uh, over here we have some beets left that were, we've been harvesting beets and stuff, but there is some beets left and we're going to do a final beet harvest because there is some gigantic beets in here. Let's uh, take a look, we'll pull one out right here. So some nice size Detroit red beets here. Very, uh, very big beets. Uh, the cylinder beets, they didn't really grow as good because they weren't thinned as early uh, but even those uh, picked up and recovered and there's there's a lot of big beets here that were left so we're gonna pull them all out and it's still quite early for the beets you could have even left them in there uh, longer but we want to go ahead and pull them out can some of them uh, pickle some of them so some nice beets in there there's some parsnips right here that were kind of left and they look like they're they might do something i don't know we also have beans over here that we left for seed and you can kind of make out some of the beans are kind of yellowing and stuff like that so that's a good thing we're leaving all this for seed back here so had a lot of beans and then in the back we had carrots back there and you could see all the carrots Pretty much died over there too, so some kind of a blight or something was killing all the carrots in the garden. So I don't know what we're going to do for carrots next year if we're even going to bother planting carrots. Uh, just beside that we have lettuce, and the lettuce is going to seed, which is a good thing. This is the first time I've ever seen lettuce grow to, go to seed in this garden. So this would be the Grand Rapid lettuce. And then this taller one back here would be romaine. This romaine is almost five feet tall, this flower, so it's quite in, quite something there. Never really seen that in this garden. It's been a different year for us. And then if we go over here to the back, the cucumbers in the main garden haven't been doing as good. And a lot of them looks like blight or something. Powdery mildew might have started hitting these plants. And they just didn't spread as much. So the cucumber action back here hasn't been that great. And it looks like blight's killing them. Something's killing them early. Not too many cukes in here. And then just beside the lettuce, we also have a row of cabbages coming up. So something new. These were planted at the end of August. 
So we're going to see if we can get a late fall crop on these. Uh, as well as these lettuce back here. I can't really recall when these were planted, but um, this lettuce didn't do too good. It looks like it just kind of stopped growing. I'm not sure what's up with that, if it'll continue to grow, but it's also kind of going brown. So it's not doing too good. We thought maybe, maybe a late planting would do something for the lettuce back here, but it's not really doing anything. It's just kind of sitting there. Alright guys, and here we are over at where the brassicas were in the other garden. Kind of just to the side. And everything's kind of slowing down for growth in here. There's cabbages in here that haven't really grown to uh, big big sizes, but looks like they're ready and ready to be picked at least. And there was one broccoli here that just keeps on producing, keeps on producing heads. They never ever get big, but keeps on producing heads, so we kind of left it and just kind of picking heads off as we go. Uh, this plant over here is a cauliflower, and it's kind of producing stuff in there, so unclear what's going to happen with this plant, but cauliflower really came late. Everything was planted at the same time for the cauliflower and broccoli and all that, and somehow this cauliflower just decided to go into flower now. I don't know if it's going to go directly to flower, if we're going to get cauliflower off of that or what, but... There it is, and then there's this one in the back that didn't do anything. Didn't flower, didn't do anything. It's a gigantic plant, it's just sitting there, so we're just going to leave it and see if it's going to do anything. And there's also some other cabbages and stuff that we're going to plant it later. Alright, so here's a shot of where we have the lettuce. We have the dill in the far back there. The dill is going to seed. Over here we have peppers. And I can make out that there is some uh, flowers on some of these peppers. And I can even see some little peppers. There's like Thai chilies on most of these plants, but a lot of them aren't flowering. And it would be great if they started to flower right now. Because if they did, there would be a lot of peppers on there. But I don't see really any flowering action. I do see some tomatoes that are kind of came up as volunteers, but nothing really happening for the peppers. They were kind of slow growing the whole time. Uh, just behind that though, we have basil. And you can see the purple heads. That's a uh, cinnamon basil, the purple heads there. That's all seed. And then there's more of your traditional basil. So here's another shot of the basil. And you can see, so a lot of that is all seed there. Something's been eating, eating this basil kind of. We've been topping it as well, but something's been eating the leaves. But I guess, you know, it's still edible. But a lot of basil. And here's a shot of the dill that we're leaving for seeds, so... A lot of dill seeds is going to be here, which is a good thing. If you want to grow dill, you always need the dill seed, so... You can never have enough of that. Okay guys, I just got done picking some beets and a little bit of cukes. Let's take a look at the cukes first. So these cukes are, you know, really small because we're going to can them and they're they're pickling uh, cucumbers in case anybody's wondering. So they, they got a harder skin and they got those little spikes on the cucumbers. But this is a good size for uh, pickling. And, you know, you kind of get a harvest like this every week on the cucumbers. And I've been noticing a lot of the cucumbers, they're kind of drying out as well, so this one's kind of yellow there, so not too much water in the ground and the cucumbers are suffering because of that. And over here we have some of the beets, and here's a shot of a giant beet, they're like the size of turnips, some of these. Here's a shot of one of the bigger cylinder beets, and another shot of one of the bigger cylinder beets there, so... Some of them did pretty good. Here's like a shot of an average size beet in comparison. So this is what, you know, average size beet would be. And here's a shot of one of the bigger ones. So it's like the size of a turnip. So pretty impressed on the beets. 
not too impressed on the cucumbers this year. Not too much water in the ground, and I guess uh, the cucumbers have been suffering. So there's the update for you guys on some of the harvest. Okay guys, I'm just in the post-editing process, editing the clips that you're currently watching, and I'm basically adding this to the video here. I didn't have any footage of the fall harvest, so I wanted to do that and add that in. So we got to use these pictures because I didn't have any footage, but we'll kind of go through these pictures and look at some of the fall harvest here. Uh, some of the stuff that basically I wasn't able to show in the video. So here's a shot of the parsnips, and these were after they were pulled from the garden. So I was actually surprised to see there was uh, parsnips as well as carrots there. So somehow, miraculously, uh, those carrots actually managed to grow. You guys probably seen those carrots, and we're looking at those carrots and you know seeing how they were dying off. And somehow, I don't know, they managed to grow, but not very big, nothing to write home about there. But uh, yeah, there was something there. But the parsnips, I was really impressed and uh, shocked by. So here's another... Uh, shot of the parsnips and the, the size of them it, you know it's hard to show there's nothing really in here in the scale but on this uh, side here these were the ones from the garden and over there were the ones from the barrel and we'll take a better look at that in this next picture so here we go uh, the ones on the left were from the garden and the ones from the two five gallon pails were were over here on the right so the ones from in the pails didn't really do that great and these are about the size of parsnips that you would kind of get from the store uh, this one right here you know was a little bit bigger but there's nothing really in here for reference other than this watermelon and this watermelon was kind of you know about the size of a tennis ball maybe bigger uh, and maybe something over here where you can kind of get a something over there where you can kind of get uh, a perspective of how big these really were so this picture really doesn't show how big these were but guys I'm telling you these things were massive and we're definitely going to be, gonna be uh, growing parsnips again next year was really impressed and really actually shocked at these guys these parsnips that came out of the garden because I just didn't see them there the whole time I never I every time I did kind of dig to look I didn't see anything there and somehow at the end of the year they were just massive so here's a you know a shot that kind of depicts them so next year for sure going heavy on uh, parsnips uh, here's another shot of the carrots and I'm just surprised that they even grew and I think you know it was blight that got the par uh, that got the carrots so you know very very small carrots of course uh, and here's a shot of the broccoli so the broccoli was a uh, part of the second crop that we had up against the fence and this was after the harvest here so there's nothing really to show you guys but uh, you know here's some broccoli basically regrowing and I think there's a head over here yeah there's a head right over here on this guy that wasn't quite harvested yet but I believe the size of this head right here was kind of indicative of what you know how big these broccolis were so they weren't quite store-bought broccolis uh, you know so they were quite small but nevertheless you know it was something and one thing I learned about uh, doing this fall planting is because we planted everything in the same spots you know it was ready used that year so it had didn't really have the energy that it really needed for that second crop although these plants did get really massive they just couldn't finish uh, and here's a shot of uh, another shot of the broccolis and one of the little cabbages on the end so we'll go take a look at some of the cabbages and here we go uh, some of the cabbages right here so we had another row of cabbages and this was part of the the second crop too that was in the main garden as you could see you know all the weeds and uh, leaves taking over so I believe this cabbage here was pretty indicative of what most of them uh, came out looking like and at this point in time you know there was already uh, cabbages uh, harvested and stuff too although you know I should point out some of the cabbages just didn't produce they just didn't produce a head uh, you know they just didn't do anything but most of them you know were around about this size so they all did mature and I was uh, quite impressed with cabbages so we're definitely going to be doing another fall crop on uh, cabbages next year so so yeah that was a real good thing so the turnips this year I didn't really get to show you guys the turnips but the turnips were a complete failure uh, they had root maggots and uh, you know we did get some out of it but yeah I, I don't know what happened to the footage of it I would have added it as well as the the radishes were a complete failure too so uh, might not be doing radishes or tur turnips for sure uh, next year not doing those uh, too many root maggots uh, that attract to those plants so yeah that was the update for you guys I figured I'd fill you in 
Uh, if you, you know, got this far, make sure you drop a like on the video. And if you want, subscribe for next year's footage because we'll probably be doing another gardening series.